You and Holes said that uh, you were surprised he wasn't given a government job after the war. Yes, there were even rumors of him being promoted all the way up to Rear Admiral. <laughs> friends and welcome to back to let's play the agency chapter one i'm your host magic man mo i'm just coming to the realization that this is slightly loud look at that only 12 it's too loud it's, a, it's too loud at 12 anyway uh yes uh we are playing the agency once again um as you might well notice there's this fun little chapter two is now available on kickstarter um so that's a big part of um of this right so this is again full disclosure a sponsored continuation of the original sponsored series so uh, originally I was sponsored to play three episodes of, of this and now I've been sponsored to play another five to help promote chapter two of the agency um, unfortunately fortunately fortunately I still have my save game oh there's two of them. Why is there two of them? I don't remember saving twice. Well, that's from 11.7. That's from 11.9. We'll go with this one. Indeed. Um, so, fortunately, I still have my save. Unfortunately, I don't remember what any of these people's voices are at all. It's been a very long time. Uh, like you probably saw, the last time I picked this up was last year. So, um, forgive me, but we're going to continue the series. I'm going to make up all new voices. We're going to play another five episodes of this. And please, if you like what you see, if you think that this is a game you're interested in or are interested in supporting, the second one, Chapter 2, is available on Kickstarter. There's going to be a link to that in the description down below, as well as a link to this game if you're interested in Chapter 1. Um, from what I remember, I enjoyed this um, for as much of it as I played. Fortunately, uh, luckily, I didn't play. I know it sounds kind of awkward, but luckily, I didn't play like beyond my save point and like d delete this one. That would have been a problem. Where do we leave off, Captain Stendhal? That's this guy, right? Indeed. I think he. I think he had a rough, a gruff, a gruff voice. Now, who's Beckwith? Is this Beckwith? Who are the blood cores? Actually, I think this is Beckwith. No, I'm Beckwith, right? Who are who are the blood cores? Hole is this guy. Oh, of course, you're not from Scalva, right? The Blood Corps are the personal police squad of Prince Ludwig. The Red Prince. Yes, the Red Prince. After the war ended, the Emperor gave his battle-hardened little brother the title Constable of the Realm. He then collected the toughest and meanest marauders from his own brigades and called them his personal guard. They're effectively above the law and will use whatever means they please to extract justice. If you ever see one of them, avoid them at all costs. Uh, Captain, wasn't it one of those bullies from the Blood Corps that did in O'Reilly? Aye, it was. I remember he had kind of a gruff, piratey voice. Anyway, on to the business I really wanted to talk about. Someone left a wood shell here for you yesterday. Uh, really? And did your people see who it was? The bartender saw the wood shell left on the table, and underneath it, your name written on a napkin. It could be a trap, though. Here it is. Uh, thanks. Looks like it could be Lansbury's writing, handwriting. Uh, it's it's a bit t it's a bit rough, though. Which is why I, sus I suspect that it could be a trap. I don't remember who these people are. It's very hard to booby trap a wood shell. Uh, they're too light, and it's easy to tell. Oh, I think someone else said that. That's not what I meant by trap. It might be a ruse to lead you in the wrong direction. Well, if it is, then it should lead me to the culprit eventually. Albeit indirectly. Haha. <laughs> I guess that's one way of looking at it. Uh, Beckworth, bring this over to Fio and crack it together. That's why I was confused, because sometimes it says Stendhal, sometimes it says Captain Stendhal. Ugh. Tr trick me. I have a few more items I need to discuss with my old lieutenant here. I'll be over later to take a look. Uh, right away, sir. Alright, so I'm going to take the wood shell over to Fio. Fio? Fio. Why not? Fio. And we're going to try to crack this wood shell. I remember the wood shells are like little puzzles and they have coded messages inside them. Theo, your father has a wood shell he wants us to crack. 
Uh, damn it! I was just wrapping up this table of pool! Okay, let's do it! Alright, she was, uh, totally just destroying a bunch of people at pool. Okay, here we go. We got... Oh, um... I feel like the Kraken needs to go down here, right? Well, actually, this entire line needs to be down below. I'm guessing something like that. And then... Oh, this isn't so bad. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't so bad. Uh, where's the corner for this? Is it this one? No, it was def it's definitely this one. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I was taking my full concentrating... Concentr uh oh We gotta switch these... Uh, uh, oh, it's gotta be in the corner, doesn't it? There we go, got it. Which so completed in 43 moves. I don't think that, that, that was... That wasn't too bad, actually. I think 43 moves was pretty, was pretty good there. Quick puzzle. And how are you kids getting along? This guy, Captain St Cap Captain, are you trying to set us up? Is it, I, I'm on to you, Captain. I, I know what you're doing here. We just finished cracking it. I pass it over. Let's take a look inside. What does it say? Hotel Excelsior. Rooftop restaurant. Lansbury? Maybe only one way to find out. Shall we get going? It's late. We probably can't get in. We'll go tomorrow morning. What if he's waiting for us there? I doubt it. If he was, he'd have to put a time put he'd have he'd have put a time too. Captain, I don't know what you're talking about. Captain, you're going crazy. Probably just another lead. Fair enough. Come on, guys, let's go home. All right, let's go. Feel, let's go sneak off together. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll start snooping around without him, without the old man. We'll leave the old man behind. <laughs> I'm pretty beat. I'm going to bed. Good night, Dad. That's like... I, I bet she's sneaking off. I bet she's sneaking off. That's what I would do. I would sneak off. Good night, darling. Yeah. Alright, Captain. Let's sneak off without Theo. <laughs> Come, join me for a drink. I'm sure you must be feeling a tad overwhelmed by all this. Uh, yes, it's all been a bit much, I must confess. You'll get used to it. Uh, so, who's Lansbury? Ah, yes, I figured you'd ask sooner or later. Lansbury is the other main detective in our agency. There's more? I didn't know we had more detectives. Wait, there are... See? I remember this from the original three videos I shot that my thinking and back with, we think a lot alike. I think I think I have what it, what, what's, uh, what it takes to be a detective. Yes, after I opened up the shop, two of my buddies who served in the Imperial Fleet with me joined my agency and became P.I.s as well. Private eyes. Lansbury and Clark. Clark? I don't know who Clark is. Clark's no longer in the agency. That explains why I don't know him. He was pretty old. So, older than you, Captain? <laughs> he was pretty old, so he only stayed on for a few years before retiring in the countryside. Oh, and they also served with you and my father on the same airship, right? Clark never did. Clark was a captain, too, and commanded his own airship. He was briefly promoted to Commodore near the end of the war, actually. Briefly promoted? So did he get demoted, or did he just mean he retired soon, like quickly? But alas, he was too much of a rebel and fought too much with the senior admirals. They forced him to retire... I called it. Forced him to retire early, and so he joined me in the agency right after the war ended. As for Lansbury, he was my first lieutenant and second in command for the first few years of the war. After the third year of the war, the new airships that the Imperial Fleet had commissioned were, uh, were ready, and Lansbury was promoted to captain and given his own ship. We remained good friends during the war. Unlike Clark, he got along extremely well with most of the senior admirals of the fleet. He really is the complete opposite of Clark. Sometimes I call him Lewis. I think from now on, Lansbury is Lewis. Lewis is very refined, eloquent, and agreeable. In many ways, not what you'd expect from a soldier or a detective, but alas, that's what fate had in store for him. 
You and Holes said that uh, you were surprised he wasn't given a government job after the war. Yes, there were even rumors of him being promoted all the way up to Rear Admiral <laughs> after the war. I don't know what a Rear Admiral is, but that sounds atrocious. <laughs> But despite his popularity, he was too young and had not seen enough major engagements to merit a title. Such a title. So after the war, he too fought, found himself jobless, and one thing led to another, and he too joined my agency. Does he have a team like you do? No, he works alone. He's normally handling the smaller, more domestic cases. Which is why you're wondering why he's gone missing. Exactly. He wouldn't have gone up into anything that would uh, warrant, like, kidnapping or something. It, it's all pretty, pretty civil, usually, so it's very suspicious that he's gone and disappeared. Well, I hope to meet him one day. I hope you do, too. Lansbury is a good man. So, Hole is a P.I., too? I started to give myself an accent. Kind of, but not really. I'll put it this way. Hull is a gentleman of fortune. If he needs to do P.I. work, he'll do it, but if he can find other ways to make a quick buck, then he will. So he's a criminal? No, 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 nah, nah, no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> nah, I wouldn't say that, nah, that's crazy talk. He just likes to live in the gray side of the market. And he's ex-military too? Yes, he served as second lieutenant on my airship and handled all the mechanics. Very clever chap, graduated first in his class. I was very lucky to have him. You're lucky you have so many friends you can rely on, sir. Like, a ridiculous number of reliable friends. <laughs> Except for when they go disappearing and missing and such. Then not so much. Without friends, this city would be impossible to live in. Anyway, I think I'll turn in now. All this talking got me tired. We were out for a really long time today, so I'm sure you're pretty bush as well. It's not like it's been several months since the last episode of this aired and we've been out all day. <laughs> you can sleep in tonight. We'll have a late start tomorrow. Good night, sir. What is that? Who are you? I remember the job that oh. I had before the war started. When I told the men in my unit, they could hardly believe me. They would say, Captain Lansbury, a teacher? You hardly seem to fit the role, sir. <laughs> I forgot there was voice very acting. Long time ago. I was very surprised by how much I learned from my students. I remember there's this one boy called Marcus that suffered terrible bullying. It was a cliché, really. He was the smallest boy in his class, but coincidentally, also the brightest. Of course, I would intervene whenever possible, but I couldn't be there all the time for the boy. I wasn't his bodyguard, for heaven's sake. Two or three years down the line, I was pleasantly surprised to see that he had found a solution to his problem. You see, this was at the time when his class was turning 14, and their hormones had begun setting in. There were these two girls that caught the attention of many of the other young boys in Marcus's class. Marcus noticed this and was quick to exploit it. He quickly befriended those two girls and began giving them all the answers to all the homework assignments that were being set. Within two months, he had become untouchable. Maybe I was spacing out, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that had anything to do with anything at all. Hey, all right, that's actually gonna do it for this episode. Um, like I said, we're gonna make five of these, so this was one out of five. But actually, episode four because I've already done three. So you know how that goes. Maybe you don't know how that goes. I don't know how that goes. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so this was the, the, um, we're gonna do four more episodes of this for sure. Um, in the sponsor series, we're doing this. Um to help promote the uh, Kickstarter to um, uh, the Agency Chapter 2. And we're running out of time, actually. We've got about half a month left, um, I think. Some something like that. Uh, and uh, it's not doing too bad. Uh, the, the, the devs aren't even asking for a lot of money, like, in the grand, sc uh, grand scheme of things. I think it's like 
a thousand Australian dollars. I don't know what uh, the Australians call their do dollars, uh, but in US dollars, it's like 700 something dollars. So it's not even a lot. So they're just helping for a little help. They're just asking for a little help. They're just helping for a little help. That doesn't make any sense. They're just asking for a little help to get uh, help literally kickstart uh chapter two so i hope you guys will consider checking that out and throwing a couple bucks and seeing this thing to completion uh they if, if they don't make enough money they might not make chapter two which would really suck and I, I i do like where they're going with this and i would like to see a sequel even though i haven't completed the first game i'm already excited about them working on a second game because i think there's a lot going on here that i like um that being said, links are in the description, so you can go check that out for yourself. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, all that YouTube stuff. In the meantime, I just hope to see you guys in the next episode of Magic Man Mo. Bye!